Mark Matthews, editor of Prism Magazine, published by the American Society for Engineering Education. Our February issue features a last word essay by Dr. Ruth Graham, a consultant who recently completed a study of engineering education reform for the Royal Academy of Engineering and MIT. Her report draws on interviews with 70 experts from 15 countries and case studies of significant educational reform. It was asking the particular question of what distinguishes successful changes uh, that stick from those uh, that don't. Uh, and very briefly, the uh, successful uh, educational changes that, that really uh, stick for the long term uh, had a number of common elements, such as the coherence of the curriculum, that they were embedded into a coherent curriculum, that they enjoyed really strong leadership from the head of department. Uh, and interestingly, that they had, uh, all, all the developers of the change had recorded um, uh, and disseminated the impact of the change very widely. You say you saw successful changes that just wither on the vine. What causes them to falter? The, the key, and, and this came out so strongly from the study, uh, is isolation. That these individual efforts are, are very, very isolated. Uh, the, the faculty members develop them uh, and the, their, their colleagues really can't see the impact uh, of what's happening. They really aren't terribly aware of what's happening. They may be aware that it's, it's a rather resource intensive activity, um, but otherwise they really don't see the impact of what's happening. Uh, and the courses are often not interconnected with the rest of the curriculum. So actually they can disappear very easily and very quickly with really no impact on the rest of the curriculum and people uh, also not fighting for their continuation because they never saw the kind of impact that they had. Can you expand a bit on the features that are common across successful programs? We looked at across 15 different countries in the interviews and the case studies. And I guess I'd expected to find some significant differences between uh, different change programs depending on their culture, their geography, the size and type of institution. What was really interesting to me is that actually uh, successful changes or the features of successful change were largely independent uh, of almost all of these factors. And the, the, the features of successful change are, I, I categorised within four areas. Uh, the first of those were the circumstances under which the reform is initiated. So actually this is independent of the entire process of reform. This is what are the conditions when uh, the, the, the department or school start the reform. Um, and in almost every case of successful change, the common feature was a, a really strong sense of collective responsibility. Uh, amongst the faculty and, and this was really quite startling. Um, in most cases collective responsibility is um, linked or stemmed from an urgent problem that's apparent to all faculty and in most cases this is something to do with the market position of the department, perhaps recruitment, retention issues or perhaps uh, sometimes it's from an external imposed change, perhaps a structural change uh, in the department, in the sorry, in the university or an accreditation change. But this collective sense of responsibility, this sense where faculty are saying, we, we have to do something here, we have to engage together to make something happen. The, the second area uh, of these common features was to do with educational design. And as I mentioned before, this is to do with the extent to which the change is embedded in a coherent and interconnected curriculum structure. Even if the change itself is relatively small, that the entire curriculum structure has changed and this reformed uh, set of courses are, a, are an integral part, an interconnected part of the new curriculum. The third element um, of these common features to, is to do with leadership. Uh, and it, it came out so strongly that the department is the engine of change. Uh, with very, very strong support from the head of department amongst the successful changes that I looked at. Uh, and changes that are attempted that are smaller than that unit, perhaps uh, within a group of faculty, or larger than that unit, perhaps across a school, are very, very much more difficult to implement success successfully. Uh, and as such, the success rate is much lower. And the final, uh, the fourth set of common features is to do with how do you sustain sustain change? Um, and it was interesting to note, actually, that all changes, even the ones that were successfully changed, uh, 
encounter a very significant problem, usually about five or ten years out. And often the problem is triggered by perhaps a university restructuring or new senior management within the school or department. Um, And those programmes that successfully overcome that problem uh, are those that again have this intellect interlinked curriculum structure that have a a wide cross-section of faculty involved in the change process but also those that have collected evidence of the impact of the change and the kind of impact that you can perhaps put on a powerpoint sheet and show to new department head or a new dean or new university management to demonstrate the positive impact of the change but also the impact perhaps of of going back to a more traditional curriculum Uh, And the evidence that seems to resonate most strongly are those that look, um, that deal with the income and reputation of the the department. So, as I mentioned before, uh, retention, recruitment or uh, employability. Readers can find PRISM at prism-magazine.org. A longer article by Dr. Graham appears in the October issue of the Journal of Engineering Education. You can read her full report at the URL shown here.